Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to talk about writing formulas for ionic compounds with transition metals. So today is the central question. How is the charge of a transition metal determined from the formula of an ionic compound? All right, so a quick review on transition metals. Remember that a metal, metal cations coming from groups 3 through 12 and 14 through 16 do not come like become like noble gases. Um, for me, this, th this gets really confusing. So here's what I like to think. Instead of saying that, I like to say, remember that metals coming from not groups 1A, 2A, or 3A. So um, any metal coming from groups 1A, 2A, or 3A um, do not get Roman numerals. Any other metal, any not group 1A, 2A, 3A metal needs to have a Roman numeral. The reason for the Roman numeral is because there's no way, no other way to predict its charge. So, um, for example, if I had something like um, copper two sulfide, I know that this Roman numeral two means the copper has a two plus charge or it lost um, two electrons. So you would have, if you wanted to write the formula, you'd have Cu2 plus sulfide is a two minus, the charge is neutralized, and CuS would be the formula. So um, when we're looking at a name, the, the Roman numeral is really helpful because they tell you the formula or the charge. But what about if you only know the formula and you have to figure out the name? That can be a little trickier. So let's figure out how to do that. So using Roman numerals in names. So we're going to do the practice problem FeCl2. And we want to write the name of this thing. So how do we go about this? From here on out, whenever you're naming an ionic compound, go through these steps. So the first thing you need to do whenever you look at an ionic compound is determine if the cation, the positive charged one, the metal, comes from group 1A, 2A, or 3A. If it doesn't, we're going to need to use a Roman numeral. That's where it gets tricky. How do I know what the Roman numeral is? Because how do I figure out the charge? Well, that's what this slide's about. Determining the, the ion charge from the formula. Um, so let me put that, what was our example again? I forgot. FeCl2. All right, so let's put our example here. FeCl2. All right, so basically what you're going to do is go backwards from putting the formula together like normally do. We're going to now take it back apart. So from the subscript, determine how many of each type of ion is present. So what we know is that we have one iron and two chlorines. So we're going to list those out. We're going to say one iron and two chlorines. Um, then we need to write the charge for the anion. That's one we can figure out. So let's check out a periodic table so we can figure out the charge on the chlorine. Chlorine is here. It's an anion, meaning it's going to gain electrons to become like a noble gas. It's specifically, let me zoom in a little bit, it's going to gain, go from 17 to 18 electrons, becoming isoelectronic with argon. So it's Cl1, we mess with one electron. We gain an electron, which means it has extra electrons, so it's going to be Cl1 minus. Um, let's go back to here. All right, so we know we have Cl1 minus. That was easy. So we figured out the charge for the anion. So what's next? Add up all of the anion charges to determine the overall negative charge. Well, we have two chlorines, each with a negative one charge. So we have a total of two minus charge. 
Then determine the overall charge on the cations needed to cancel out the negative charge. Remember, we want the whole point of these atoms get or these ions getting together is to be neutral. So we have a, if we have a total ch negative charge of two, we need a total positive charge of two, right? That should make sense. So if we have a, if the two chlorines are two negative and we have one iron that needs to be two positive, that means it's going to be Fe2 plus. Um, and this is going to be our Roman numeral. So the name is going to be iron two chloride. Now there is one more, um, one more step in our notes um, that we didn't really have to do this time, which is step D, determine the overall charge on the cation needed. Oh, we did that one already, huh? Needed to cancel out the negative charge. The last step is divide the overall charge by the number of cations to determine the charge of the cation. We didn't need to do that with our, with our example here because there was only one of them. We'll try another example where we do have to follow that step. Try one more problem. So this time we're gonna, we need to write the name for the chemical formula PB3N2. So we know this is ionic because it's got a metal, the lead, and a non-metal, the nitrogen. Um, but from here on out, whenever you're writing a formula for an ionic compound, you need, to do, you need to look at the cation and determine whether or not it needs a Roman numeral. So let's find out. Lead is right here in group 4A, which means it's not in group 1A, 2A, or 3A, which means it needs a Roman numeral which means we need to figure out the charge. But there's no way to figure out the charge looking at the periodic table because he is not ever gonna become like a noble gas. We can't make a prediction. So what we're gonna do instead is figure out the charge on the um, anion. So we're gonna take this formula, we're gonna break it apart. We're gonna list out that we have three leads and two nitrogens. So now we need to figure out the charge on the nitrogen. So nitrogen, let me get rid of this stuff. Nitrogen is right here. He is a non-metal. So he's gonna gain electrons to become isoelectric with a noble gas, specifically neon. He's gonna gain, go from seven to eight to nine to 10 electrons. He's gonna gain three electrons. If he's gaining electrons, it means he has extra electrons giving him a negative charge. All right, so our two N's or nitrogens are gonna have a three minus charge. So all together, our total negative charge is six minus. Remember that the reason the ions get together is to end up, with, to end up being neutral. Right? So if I have a six negative charge, that means I need a six positive charge. The question is, what is the charge on each individual lead? Well, the, the point we didn't do before is divide the overall charge, meaning the six, by the number of cations to determine the charge of the cation. Well, we have three leads. So six divided by three equals two plus. So each lead has a two plus charge. So our Roman numeral, the Roman numeral is not the overall charge, it's the charge on the individual ion. So our Roman numeral is gonna be two. So the name of PB3N2 is lead two nitride. Um, this is not difficult, 
but you do need to kind of think it through. So you break apart the formula, figure out the charge on the anion, which will then let you figure out the charge on the cation. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.